Hello and welcome to this video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Context 7. I'm going to show you how to set it up and why it's good. Now, if you don't know, Context 7, basically, if you just go on Google, type or go to context7.com. So context7.com. Basically, what it is, is it's up-to-date documentation for LLMs and AI code editors. So you can manually copy these, right? Paste them into cursor, whatever. This would save you a tiny bit of time because it's really not that difficult to find this stuff for yourself, right? But the cool thing is, is this is what I've been wanting to do for ages, by the way. I think someone may have copied me here or they have this idea themselves. I've said this before, you, you know, it could just be the same natural conclusion. It doesn't have to be copying me. Um, but basically what they've done is they put it in raw format right, which is perfect for LLM text. This is actually what Gina used to do. I didn't build it well. Um, this is what Gina used to do. Um, there used to be a thing here where you could press integrate. They got rid of it, I don't know why, but, but it did the same thing. It basically just explained what Gina was and how to use it to the LLM. Now this is cool, okay, but imagine if they had an MCP server. Oh wait, they do have an MCP server. So this was actually made by Uptash, which I did not realize before. It's a JavaScript um, MCP server. And let's just install this thing. Okay, so luckily for us, if we go on Klein, it's actually available here, Context 7. Before I do that, I'm going to change the model here. I'm going to change it to Gemini 2.5 um, Pro, this one. The reason I'm doing that is because it's the most up-to-date model with a cutoff of January 2025. So if I go on MCP servers and just press install here, then I like to immediately press cancel and say, I'm on Git bash on Windows. Please set up the server, then change my settings file, ensuring the server is run when the MCP, uh, when there is a command or on startup. Okay, so we'll run through this process. This will be slightly different for everyone. This is the kind of annoying thing about showing people how to install MCPs. You can do it a different way, which is where you just um, use their GitHub, right? But because they don't have client on their GitHub, I'm just gonna do it this way. So you can see here, it loads MCP documentation, and then it wants to create a directory. So we'll just see, there we go. We'll just let this run for a little bit. Should just install it fine. So now it wants to read my MCP settings.json file, which is good. I really don't want it to overwrite any current configurations. Perfect. So now it should be able to set this up fairly easily. I've noticed recently, especially Gemini 2.5 Pro is really, really good at native understanding and installing of these MCP servers. I have some other MCP servers I want to talk about. And I actually have my own prompt for building an MCP server based on third-party MCPs. That is inside the school community. That will be the first link in the description of this video. I also did make a free video about it recently with the prompt. But if you want to check out the school, want to support me, whatever, then please feel free to check it out. It'll be the first link in the description. But we can see here that it thought that it was finished, but obviously it wasn't. Okay, so let's see if it can manage to set this up. This looks like it might have worked because it realized I was on Windows and it used to use, it has to use the slash C. The other option here is to set this up on Linux instead. Oh, there we go, beautiful. So we now have access, wait, was that actually it? Let's have a look. Yeah, resolve library ID, require first that resolves general package. Okay, so it needs to find the library ID first. And now if we go on plus, right, and we say use uh, I want to make a new Next.js project. Start by doing the research needed on Next.js using the Context 7 MCP. I uh, will just leave it there. Um, store any useful information that is more up to date in a file called information.md. So a fairly simple prompt here. I know that you can do this with, you know, perplexity and blah, 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 but to have native understanding of this system 
that will start to make things incredibly easy for us. So to give the actual to give the actual AI the ability to read this whenever it needs, right? That's the difference here. So let's see, there we go. Bang, look at that. They got all of the, wow, that's pretty fucking cool to be honest with you. Is this completely free? Um, I mean, seems pretty free, bro, not gonna lie. You can add your own docs as well. Okay, I mean, this is pretty genius. This is a very good. Well, they've done the SEO thing that I said that people should do as well. You buggers. You absolute buggers. Damn, I was going to do this. All of their meta titles and descriptions are the same. Please hire me to do your SEO, whoever the fuck is doing this, because this is terrible. You've done this really badly. I just, I just mean the SEO, okay? I'm not criticizing the actual thing itself, but just the SEO, not great. So it looks like we can now get fully up-to-date information completely for free into our LLMs natively whenever it needs it. That is a game changer for dev. In your prompts now, all you need to do, what I've been doing recently with prompting is explaining the MCPs, right? So MCP1, use it for X. MCP2, use it for Y. And I'll actually, I'll show you an example of this. So it's trying to actually create a Next.js app, but... Um, I'll just stop that for now. Let me just show you an example of what I mean. So there's one thing that I like to do, which is just say quite a broad, um, I want you to use my various MCPs to do research. Okay, so that's one very, very helpful prompt for you. And then another one is, so you can see here, this is quite an early example. I can find a better one, but um, use Brave MCP to do Google searches, right? So MCP1 is for X. Use fetch MCT, MCP to scrape the pages you find. So MCP2 is for Y. So when you're prompting now, you can add MCP3, or in this case, context 7. Use this before adding any new dependencies or I, I don't know exactly what they're called, third-party APIs, etc., to check the up-to-date documentation. Do not proceed without first doing research in case your knowledge is out of date. So this will, this will basically remove like so many problems. And not only that, you could also add like, if you get an error, check the documentation, right? If, um, if X happens, do why this is another prompt as well i've also got another very very interesting mcp to show you guys i'll be talking about that in next video i'm not going to mention what it is right now but just in case someone sees this video and beats me to it but yeah guys definitely check out the school a lot of this information is already in here you can make your own third-party api mcps as well this stuff is getting crazy now i actually built my own brave local search and also my own data data for seo mcp in five minutes right so you can find that video for free on my channel or subscribe to my school whatever you prefer but basically now we're getting to the point where we can give full context okay we can make our own mcps and then this final mcp which i'm going to tell you about in the next video does something very very interesting that will probably change AI coding and is approaching AGI. The, the, these bolt-ons to Klein and Roo, in my opinion, Klein and Roo are the best AI coders out there. These bolt-ons are approaching AGI, right? This like holy trinity of AI coder, MCPs, and then this last one, which I'll talk about in the, in the next video, um, is, is approaching AGI in my opinion. I'm gonna leave the video there, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I just wanted to talk about this quickly and easily, show you guys how to set it up and show you guys how you can get started with it and give native access to all documentations that your AIs might need. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being patient with me. I was away this weekend on a stag do. If you know what a stag do is, you can probably understand why I sound so fucking tired. Thanks for watching. If you're watching all the way to the end of the video, you're an absolute legend. I'll see you very, very soon with some more content and peace out.